So I think that this game and the people now and there's something I watched very fascinating about this game. We'll talk about this right now is uh, that people had a very preconceived notion about what it could be and what it should be and what it is before it even came out, which mm-hmm. happens with all games. I mean, that's the reason people pre-order people. You put your five dollars down. You feel like you're legally allowed to say anything you want about any game. Right. Oh, uh, you? Usually I, I was kind of hoping that was how the universe. Worked, yeah. yeah. Usually I, all, yeah. usually positive. Uh, and I put a I put a stupid meme in the Beyond group today where I took the bug eyed guy from Assassin's Creed Unity, which is uh, a glitch that happened when you play that game on, yeah. on you know the highest the max spec PC, um, versus uh, the dog getting stuck in this in the stairs in in Fallout Four. Yeah. And on the left I wrote game breaking for Assassin's Creed, and on the right I wrote charming. Uh-huh. For for Fallout Four, that's a great analogy because okay, Bethesda does get a write off for this stuff, and I, I why I, though is it ambition? I feel very okay. I think it's two things. All right, first one, let's talk about one. It's it's the ambitious scale. Yeah, they're just doing this enormous interactive thing, and we write it off maybe because we can, it, it goes all the way back to that DOS background where you're used to tweaking with your PC and hoping it would work. And yeah, fight, and, yeah, and this giant open area with all these moving parts. But the other part of it, I think, is it's kind of like a Godzilla movie. Um, people who like Fallout games are kind of like people who like Godzilla movies. They're big. You're talking about like the Japanese ones? Yeah, the Japanese ones. You go in and you see the little strings on the airplanes and the man in the rubber suit smashing the city. It's all fake. It's all screwed up. If I went and saw a Terminator movie and I could see the string moving the helicopter or I could see this So the, the glitches CG, are part of right, the appeal. I would make fun of it. But Godzilla yeah. fans know this is part of it. I think that for Fallout... The people go in with this kind of the same attitude. I mean, Vox wrote an article about having to nuke an eleven hour save file because somebody got stuck in an elevator. Yeah. yeah is that part is that is that seeing the strings or is that a because I feel like okay, that's, that's irritating. That's a but, war but story. I, you know? I, I, I walked out yeah. I walked out of a, a, a building in that game after waiting forty five seconds from a load and I stepped off of the steps and I got stuck between a wall and a tree. My problem this happened to me twice I'm in the game to and I had how you how you nuke an eleven hour okay again, I'm an old so I've been playing these games since the beginning of time. I'm yeah. an old PC guy, so I know you save every half hour. Well, that's the and other that's thing. The, and, like, you need to constantly quick save in this game. Yeah. And they don't tell you to do that. You just have to know to do yeah, that. Yeah, well, it does it. Every time you check your Pip-Boy and change something, it auto-saves. You know, things like that do happen. But it's not for, for mission structure, basically. Yeah. If I if I fast travel to a location where a guy gives me a mission, and I take on that mission, and I go to start that mission, and I yeah. walk, you know, or fast travel again, yeah. or walk 30, feet, uh, 30 miles across the, the city to get to the next thing, and then I die, and I hadn't quick saved... It loads up the save that was basically one or two fast travels ago. Yep. After a sixty second load time. Yeah. And for I'm I'm not saying like you don't need to be a casual gamer to understand that that's kind of a pain in the ass, mm-hmm. right? But they don't tell you that. And there's a lot of things uh, that they pretty much don't tell you flat out, which I'm okay with. I don't need my handheld. But like let's break this game down. Like yeah. let's really break this okay, down here. That's fair. Uh, the graphics are are pretty good. Yeah. Right. It's it. The world is gorgeous. The art direction is unmatched. Oh, the, yeah. the guard direction is oh, yeah. unmatched. Yeah. Hands down. The yeah. the graphics are pretty good. The story is. Not great. The, the story. Well, it depends on what you, how you want to define the story. The story for a big open world game works fine. You know, Sean is the MacGuffin to drive you forward. Okay, but that I think the story of the game, again, like like most of these kinds of games, is what you make it. They give yeah. you all yeah. kinds of hooks. This is a game primarily about creating your own narrative. Second, about following the narrative in the tale. The narrative in the tale is passable. It's not egregious. It's mm-hmm. not. It's not video game dumb. It's not, you know, Call of Duty guy. No, you know, no, it's, no. Not, it's not that kind no. of thing. It, it, you've got – somebody put some effort into it and created a narrative that's flexible enough that you can ally with two completely diametrically opposed bodies. You, you can choose one of them, and in a big open world, either one of them is going to play out in a logical, satisfying way. Well, that's hard to do. So well, no, it is hard to do, that. and that's why they didn't nail it. Because they they leave you they start you with the game thinking that you are siding with one of those teams and that that's your home base mm-hmm. and it's really not nothing in the game tells you it isn't and again freedom of player choice but that's not entirely illustrated and I don't think it needs to be but I think it needs to be a little more defined uh, that you do have that choice because right off the bat they're basically just like here's the thing and then they walk away from yeah. it and it's kind of like the crafting system I believe that these things were integral parts of the game's relationship mm-hmm. with the player at some point and throughout the process of developing this game those things were dropped or See, fell I to the wayside. I don't feel Jack that way about it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, that, that, I really don't feel that way Interesting. about it. I, no, I feel like it's more like a playground. Uh, you build a playground for a bunch of kids, you put a sliding board, you put the, whatever that spinny thing's called, uh, merry Sometimes round, kids teeter- get stuck between the parts. Yeah, you got the teeter-totter, it's you nice got the, 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 the dogs and the have dog, to nuke themselves. The dog walk- can't get across the <laughs> rope. <laughs> and, you got, no, you, and you get dropped off at the playground. It's like, what do you want to play mm-hmm. on? Yeah. It's this mm-hmm. and this and this and this and they're all fun and you can run between them or you can spend all your time on the slide or you can 
Right. Whatever makes you happy. And at the end, the sun's going to go down. It's going to be time to go home. The game's over, but you had a good time. What, unless you've got really, a wood chip in your knee. Unless you've got a wood chip in your knee, that can happen. Mm-hmm. Or you burn your legs on the slide. Yeah, shorts. that's happened. Oh, was that an arrow on the knee awful. joke? Oh. Are you, are you, are you, oh, I, I didn't think it was. So, I mean, I spent 25 hours in this game, and I felt like I was constantly looking, walking around expecting to find the next big thing that would get that would keep me to get going. And I, I it, it made me realize that this is not a game of highs. No, that is absolutely. There are no, there are no monumental, phenomenal moments in this game that really go, "Wow, a great set piece, great battle, great this, or great that." I mean, you do have some pretty good fights that go, "Man, that that dragged out longer than it should have, but I prevailed." Uh, but there are a lot of mediums and lows, and I think it's like stacking up those mediums and lows bring you up to a game that uh, most reviewers. Uh, including ours, have called a great game. And, and I, see, I the think the major difference that, between me and you is that I feel like it's mediums and highs as opposed to mediums and lows. Okay. So mm-hmm. I, I'm, I'm a little more on that end of it, but I, it's. But you're right. There aren't too many moments that were just awe-inspiring, except again those ones that happen to emerge that you were describing earlier, almost poetically, when you're talking about walking through the same area the fifth time, the lighting, the different yes. creatures coming over the yeah. rest. I remember a lot of those, which moments. is what keeps me going. And, or, you know, or, like, and it also makes me. It's also funny. That's yeah. another thing that helps. It is. Very funny in places. Uh, I do appreciate that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and that helps a lot. I mean, the first time I, I'm not going to spoil Deacon, but the first time Deacon did his thing, and I didn't know it was going to happen. I just, I was like, what, huh? And then about half an hour later, it happened. And, and about I eventually you're, got you're the not, that I'm you're not at good at not time. spoiling things. Yeah, well, that's yeah. okay. We don't did know. He what sma- it is. Did he smash a watermelon with a hammer? No, like I can't did. tell Mr. Gallagher's? But it's very funny, and and made me laugh and laugh. Yeah, I think. So I mean. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Oh, no, I'm just very quickly. I think I've adored uh, the past week or two of this game in this office because it's inspired some of the most interesting uh, discussion of any game. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Honestly, in my time in the industry. Wow. Like, it's, it's some of the most interesting, just fly in the wall conversations of people who absolutely adore it and people who cannot get into it. And it's one of those, like, no one's right, no one's wrong, yeah. which right. I love. Right. And games don't generally do that. Like, Everyone came up, 90% of us came out of Metal Gear like, this is the best. Yeah. Came out of Bloodborne like, this is the best. Yeah. Like, I love the fact that this game, people can argue that this game is a 10, and people can argue that this game is a 6. Yeah. And neither of them are wrong. Yeah. I love mm-hmm. that. I would, oh, I would never you, say 6. Oh, I would probably say well, mid seven. It's almost like this is something that's too big to accurately reflect on a scale of <laughs> 1 to 10, even if you use decimal points. <laughs> Imagine that. Yeah. Well, we have Whoa. to do it anyway. I know. You know? Yeah. It's it's reader well, we service, but, no, no, but we no. don't. I mean, it's, that's that's the thing is is, and I'm sure that people are 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 probably mad at us. Hi guys. <laughs> uh, but I want to say that like having a negative opinion about a game, it kind of lends it some credence. I'm not saying I hate Fallout. I'm saying I didn't like Fallout, and that actually sucked for me because I like when games are fun. Well, yeah. Like, yeah. I, I think that having being able to have a discussion about what does and doesn't work in a game, on especially on a game of this scale, it's. It's awesome. You know? I, I will say that though, that no matter where you are, who you are, what game you're reviewing, uh, your acceptance for the amount of glitches and and freezes and stutters and like on certain versions, just flat out, you throw a grenade and you hope for the best, and yeah. when it comes back, either you're dead or they're dead. <laughs> yeah, that's unacceptable. And I don't, I know that's the Bethesda charm and all that stuff like that, but that is unacceptable to no, me. No, I, I, you know, I don't think people are ever. Maybe they are. But I don't think anybody's ever writing those annoying moments off as the Bethesda charm. I think it's the fact that no. funny things also happen. Yeah, but that's, but that's but that's not entirely that's fair because yeah. I've been reading a lot of stuff leading into the launch of this game that says, "Don't worry, they'll patch it," and B, uh, "Wait until the mods kick in." When the yeah. mods come in and do all the dirty work mm-hmm. that they couldn't do themselves, and I don't personally find that to be a cherishable ecosystem to create a, where a game can can live. Well, I, I, I think the, I think it's giving people a free one pass. One of the, I mean, but one of the things about this is like, I trust me, I got a lot of this flack last year when I reviewed uh, Assassin's Creed Unity. Is that you are experiencing all of these problems? Right. That doesn't mean everyone else is, and that's the thing. And I think that's why people, when 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 you voiced your opinion on it, some people immediately got so defensive. Even well, before people they who hadn't played, played it, yeah. Yes. yeah. But it's one of those things where I think when Dan played it, I don't think he did. Get a lot of those things. Right. He was also yeah, playing yeah. on PC, and from the sound of it, it's no, he's a, playing it's a, on Xbox One. Was he? Yeah. Oh, he, he played. played he, he played, played, played everything. Xbox yeah. One first, but he, he said PC. the PC version yeah, yeah. is remarkably better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it seems I, like it I seems agree. like it, it probably is. Um, well, I mean, I had people telling me like, why why'd you get it on consoles? Yeah. And I'm like, well, because they're selling millions of them on consoles. Mm-hmm. That's a thing you can do in a store today. And I think yeah. it's a, I think it's fair criticism to look and say, guys, you could have done better with this. Yeah. But again, they understand what the threshold for tolerance is. They have learned through Skyrim that they'll have a mod community come behind. 
and effectively do a year's worth of quality control for them. And put the right, yeah. you know, there. There, there's there you can get away with that. And I occasionally do enjoy when I walk, you know, walk up and whack a mole rat and it flies a thousand feet off the map over the curvature. Oh, I love that. Stuff like that's great. That's, that's I'm, I'm actually okay with stuff like that. You but know? I got locked. I lost a main game mission save locked into an endless loop where I was bumping up against a terminal. And, you know, I had to go back, you know, quite a ways but to my last save point because sure. uh, being an old PC guy, I've learned you just always save. Are you yeah. playing on PC? I'm playing on PC. Yeah, I started on PS4, but I switched over to PC as quick as I could. So I really loved Skyrim and... I was just thinking about this. Like, I, I feel like I could jump back into Skyrim right now and play it and enjoy it. And it's I was playing on, on that on 360, and I feel like that suffers a lot of the same problems I'm having with, with Fallout 4 on, yeah. on PS4. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I'm trying to think what the difference is, really. And I think a lot of it is that Skyrim, there's a sense of discovery in that it's something that, like, it's wilderness. You know, it's it's this barren wild. It's this kind of, un, it's this simple, uh, I mean, it's, it's old-timey fantasy versus futuristic junkyard right and there's a sense that like in fallout everyone's already been here everyone's already been here to the point that it's a problem well, I, I could i could see that and it's kind of like, feels like it's fresh footprints like i i drove by a shanty town of of homeless people this morning on the way to work you know like there's there's i i had to go through like a messed up tr- you know train ride to work i, like, I specifically sam claiborne are... says that's his problem with uh, gta games a lot of the time is right that he he wants to play in a big open fantasy world not yeah. in real world but in the case of this particular game of fallout 4 setting it in a post-apocalyptic boston as an american history not like this is every bit as satisfying as a fantasy world could be maybe even more so i'm just like mm-hmm. i'm at the old north church yeah doing this amazing thing i'm a freaking bunker hill looking across the way to where breed cell ought to be I'm, you know that's a no, I, uss constitution like, i totally agree with both of your points I'm, yeah. i mean I, I love wilderness settings in games i love stuff like that i'm also a huge junkie for post-apocalyptic dystopia mm-hmm. and walking around some sections of fallout and being like i'm in this town that people lived in 200 years ago and the only thing left are, are robots and ghouls it's very fascinating to me on the flip side i played that game for nine hours straight last Saturday and I was in a nightmare world where f- crazy people were running at me and screaming and there was trash everywhere and then I walked outside of my apartment with my wife to get dinner and I saw the same things in yeah. real life mm-hmm. <laughs> like walking around downtown San Francisco is I get a lot of that it's out there too. Like robots and nightmare yeah. ghouls. Yeah, just a lot. Of, yeah, there's a lot of a lot of robots and nightmare ghouls. It's, <laughs> we, that's the kind of city we live that's in right quite now. Apt. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but I mean, that's obviously a very personal, very specific thing. I will say that, like, if you're looking, this is I, every year. There is one game that is the game to get if you can only get one game, and I still think that Fallout is it. I mean, if you want one world, oh god, like yeah. this is it. Like, it's it, there's so much there, and if you can get into all of it, then yeah, it's going to grab you forever. I kept. I, I, I was begging for it to stick its hooks in me, and it just never really did. It felt like something that was bad for me, but that I kept I kept taking part in. You know, it was like drinking or alcohol or cigarettes or something. Okay. Where I'm like, I have this in the house, and I get you get very little enjoyment from it, moment to moment. But in the long run, here, like it's kind of it's 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 nice to have it there. But I know it's ultimately bad for me. Uh, I never felt Wait, like I respected it's, it's my tr- time. Is drinking. Bad for you? It's bad for you. Yeah. That's why you shake all I the feel time. Like I, I feel like I was eating magical Halloween candy that never made me full and never gave me diabetes. So like, I was it sounds just like, like, a, like a punishment that that's like the the Greeks would put on it's a, some That's guy. a cut scene a from Halloween Sinner. Candy yeah. Is yeah. Sisyphean? Is, is that the word yeah. you're looking for? Yeah, it's it's Sisyphean. That would be... What was I, the, but like, you know, so like, I, I tweeted out the, the image, the, the two screen caps from that Simpsons episode where Homer's eating that giant sandwich. And he starts out, and he's like, this, it's this like six foot long sub. And he's like, this is going to be great. And Marge's like, throw that thing away. And then by the end of it, he's like dying of botulism. And he's <laughs> yeah. just like raggedy, and he still loves it. He's yeah. like carrying it around with him. And I feel like that's that's not just Fallout. That's open world. It's every it's, open that's, world that's, honestly, game. that's just games. I mean, yeah. that's, it's funny because I, man, I would love to hear what old college Max would have thought of this game. I would have loved it. I mean, that's the whole thing. It's like about it, yeah. Goldfarb, uh, he hasn't started it yet, but he's like super worried about it. Uh, he said he put more time into a single playthrough of Fallout 3 than any game ever. He put yeah. in like 250 hours or yep. something insane like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But that was when he was in college. That was when he was, you know. He didn't have yeah. a lot, you know, like me. If, that's the thing. Like, if, I, there, were, there were many times where I sat down to play this game for three or four hour chunks, and I walked away going, like, I don't really know what I did. Like it's a, mm-hmm. it's totally possible to play that game for three hours and not accomplish much. I, oh, and, that is absolutely. So true. isn't that? I mean, that's kind of an issue, right? No. Uh, why? The, why yeah, no? The point of the game is wandering around and doing whatever you want, and sometimes doing. You know, it's just like some of my best memories of college. Are yeah. Sitting around in 
a, in, in a dorm with friends, wasting time for three hours, just talking about whatever. And suddenly it's three in the morning, like, where did that time go? We don't even really remember what we talked about. But I feel nothing but warm, happy memories. Oh, I know. I'm, 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 I that's love that. How, I mean, no, what I mean is that's how I feel about this game. Max like, and those, I do a podcast like that every exactly. week. Like, that's, that's, <laughs> we've that legalized time, that those, drug. Those three hours, I'm like, what did I accomplish? I yeah. don't know, but I sure had a good time. So yeah. I, I, I will say that there was no time where I walked. And maybe you feel, feel different, and that's why I'm, I'm glad you're here today. Uh, there was no time when I... I never finished a play session of this game going, yeah. Hmm. Okay, no, that definitely I did. And and, and beyond that... Beyond. Beyond, beyond exactly. Um, <laughs> that was the calmest beyond. Before that beyond. was a very calm beyond. Yeah. Uh, beyond that... Beyond! Uh, <laughs> Stop it. See, that was a louder one. Stop it. Um, uh, I, I can't think of a synonym for beyond. Um, furthermore. Furthermore. Mm-hmm. Thank furthermore! You. Thank you very much, Mr. Synonym. Um... Furthermore, um, worked on this probably, you know, again, over 100 hours yeah. in, in a week. And that meant not a lot of time for sleep or anything else. It also, else you never life. really stopped playing, and it, I that, guess. But that was kind of it. Yeah, never yeah. stopped. And those sessions, frankly, make most games less enjoyable. Yeah. Um, I was amazed how much I couldn't wait till I could put the pen down. And start playing and get back again in there. Mm-hmm. so that I could find out what was going to happen. Right, and I, and I had that too, but I think it came from that sort of unnerving disappointment I would get from like a three or four hour session. Of like, I would play it, and it would always end in either uh, I'm tired, I'm bored, or I'm frustrated. Mm-hmm. Uh, every now and then it'd be like, well, that was a really cool fight, but then I would push a little further. It's, it's, like, it's like having a perfect date, and then just like on the way out to the car totally screwing it up by talking for an extra two hours. It makes know? our jobs as critics really difficult here on this, you know, trying to reflect that or we want to let people know, you know, hey, are you going to enjoy this or not? Here's everything we can tell you about it. You definitely want to look beyond the score and, and listen to all these conver- – I did it again. Yeah. <laughs> Furthermore, the score. And uh, and look at all the arguments people are making so yeah. that you can make a, an informed purchasing decision as to whether or not you want to put your money in. Yeah, and if, you, uh, if you have money to buy a new console and one game – Get this game. Yeah. Like, that's kind of it, really. I mean, yeah, I'm still not going to tell you not to. I just think that, you know, I mean, I personally think there's better open world experiences this year. Mm -hmm. I really, I really, really want to go back to The Witcher. Like I'm kind of I'm like what do we got the rest of the, the rest of the year lined up there's yeah. I I want to play yeah. Star Wars which is going to be very casual very very junk just food yeah. yeah and I want to play Just Cause because that looks really really stupid mm-hmm. that looks like it's <laughs> going to be my Shadow of Mordor like I didn't expect it and I'm like you can ride on a dog that's crazy yeah. I'm going to jump <laughs> off the side of a building I'm looking I'm forward to Just Cause I'm going to hypnotize these yeah. bees to go kill each other yeah. whatever so, that game you know about. let us know what you think of Fallout <laughs> I think that's wild isn't it if you're listening to the show you're probably you know already ten hours into it I I, I saw people who were like. Oh, you know, uh, I, I took off of work to play Fallout. I'm like, how long did you take off for? <laughs> like, yeah, because a day did is, you yeah. quit? Yeah. yeah, did you quit? Because a day is not going to get you in there. No, yep. it's not. This is uh, this is a religion. Yeah, this is this yep. is a whole big thing. And we're obviously going to be talking about it for a long time. And I do want to say that I am walking away from the game right now, but I will probably return mm. when. They, we, I would say this on the show, games grow and they change in yeah. our absence and uh, this this game is going to continue to grow and change and I'm excited to see what the mod community done with it, does with it. I'm excited to see what Bethesda does with it. Like, There's a lot here and it's it's going to be around for a long time. You are the Douglas MacArthur of Fallout. You Thank you very much. Return. I'm going yeah. to wait until some hype dies down and I might check it out. 